There's so much to be said about the dream look aesthetic or the soft glow aesthetic. The dreamy look is indeed a popular one in videography and photography. It aims to give your shots that ethereal, almost outwardly soft look. It can be achieved through the use of a lens that diffuses the light and creates that haze in your image. Romance? Sure. Horror? Absolutely. Soft glow, dreamy, summery, pastel looking horror. I'm probably thinking of Midsummer or Pearl at this point, but you get my drift. You can definitely use one of these filters to create that, I, know, I like to call it rural horror look that has that soft summery vibe, you know, that vintage glow, that warmth, but at the same time, you know, it's in complete contrast to the topic. Dream look photography or videography with a DSLR is one thing, but trying to use the smartphone to replicate or recreate that look can be something totally different. However, it's not impossible. Reducing that digital look and bringing softness to your smartphone footage can be a game changer. You can use a mist filter, which are quite popular, or you can use a Cinebloom diffusion filter like this one from Moment. This is the 20% 52mm Cinebloom filter. Moment Cinebloom filters are available in densities of 5%, 10% and 20%. The 20% is the strongest of them all, it's the one that I have. It corresponds to one stop and it gives you the most stylized view of the, the bunch. It's also a lot warmer than the 5 and the 10, which I quite like. I was looking for something strong to pair with my Samsung S21 Ultra because when I use it with Filmic Pro, for instance, I'm not always happy with the, you know, the sharpness or just the digital look that it produces. So I want something strong that, you know, can bypass all that and give me that soft look, especially in images as well when I'm using first light or even when I'm using the native camera of my Samsung phone. Pairing that with an NZ filter or a CPO filter or why not both now means that I have the softest look that I can ask for softening hard edges, softening skin tones, but also giving that warmth and vintage look to my footage, which I really, really like. Right now, what you're seeing is the ND8 with the CPO filter paired together, but I'm going to add the moments in the bloom and we can check the difference while we still have some sunlight. Now you should be able to see some difference, but if you're not seeing the difference in this footage here, check out some of these photos that I took at this abandoned pool area. There are rain clouds and thunderstorm coming right at me, right this instance. Well, as you can clearly tell, I had to move locations because mentioning that weather changing quite fast, it actually resulted in the a bit of a thunderstorm with heavy rain. So home sweet home, back in the car, uh, waiting for the rain to stop a little bit. Uh, but at the same time, maybe finishing this video as well in a bit of a different environment. So we've been talking a lot about diffusion filters, but we haven't actually covered what a diffusion filter actually is or does specifically. Diffusion filters work by scattering light as it passes through the lens, creating a softer, more diffused image. They can help to reduce harsh shadows and create a more dreamy, ethereal look. You retain the contrast and sharpness of your image, but add a glowy haze to soften details. That's pretty much the TLDR of diffusion filters. There's a lot more to talk about or cover there, but not going into the really technical side of these things. I think they are a good investment, especially once you figure out what direction you want to take your filmmaking or mobile filmmaking journey. Into. Personally, I find that diffusion filters are really good investment. Filters in general are. I think if you're going down the route of mobile filmmaking, an ND filter is something that you should definitely have in your kit, even several ones, you know, in different strengths, just depending on the situation, depending on a lot of things like lighting, environment, uh, season. There's, you know, I, I find that there are a lot of, you know, things that change uh, and just direct what type of filter you're using. 
Filters usually are not the cheapest thing. They are cheaper brands with still quality glass that you can get, but they're really, really expensive ones. So it really depends on you know how much you want to invest or whether you want to invest right now currently it depends a lot on what you're trying to achieve and whether this is like a hobby that you want to pursue or if this is something career related that you want to try out so there are a lot of tools out there that can help you you know change the way your footage looks like a decent advice is to take it slow and steady because at the end of the day if you just have a really pretty picture that's pretty much all you have if you don't have a story if you don't have an emotional connection with that story, that's not going to translate to your audience. So at the end of the day, you have a bunch of expensive kit that you have no idea how to use and you just wanted to you know, magically start producing these fantastic films or short stories or travel videos or music videos or documentaries or interviews. It just really depends you know, on what your aim is. So go slow and steady, start with the basics and then just upgrade as time you know, passes as you figure out what you want to do and how you want to use the tools that you have. But if you want to try a diffusion filter, I find that the Moment Cinebloom is a really good investment. It's a budget-friendly filter. I bought it on a sale um, with my own pocket lunch money, whatever you want to call it. It was uh, quite a lot below 50 bucks, I think. You know, I think it's a really, really good investment. It's a quality glass. It's a quality filter. I haven't had any issues with it attaching it to different step-up rings, uh, which is what you use to attach certain filters, certain sizes filters to your smartphone. So yeah, I think it's just a matter of browsing and figuring out which is within your budget. Uh, for me, it was definitely the moments in a bloom. I wanted something that's still quality, that still gives, you know, an actual stylized look that's going to work when I put it on, I'm going to see a difference and something that wasn't going to break the bank. So the moments in the bloom checked all of these three marks. This is what I have. It's a really neat filter. It comes in this really nice uh, case that has, you know, information on the back of, you know, what you're getting. It has like soft cushion inside to keep your filter safe. So even if you're throwing this in your backpack, uh, it's not going to get damaged or anything like that. So all that being said, keep an eye out for sales, uh, especially around Black Friday. I think there's a lot of sales. I know it's a very big temptation to buy a lot of things, but if a diffusion filter is something that you're looking for, definitely check out the Moment uh, website and you know browse through what they are offering especially around the filters i probably forgot to mention this earlier but this is in no shape or form an affiliate or paid video like i mentioned i did pay for the filter out of my own money out of my own pocket uh there's something that i wanted to get for the longest time and i just made the investment a couple of months back just be on the lookout for sales there's great offerings uh, that you can get and if you are working on a budget it's definitely something that's going to fit within your budget so once you get your filter it's just a matter of experimenting with it taking it out in different you know light situations in daytime in nighttime when you have you know artificial light street lights uh, store window lights neon lights and then in daytime when you have natural light whether it's cloudy or it's sunny whether you're shooting indoors or outdoors it's really going to change the way your footage looks like and it's going to change uh you know what the filter offers you and what type of look it gives you it's going to be stronger in direct sunlight when it's you know bright and sunny it's going to be a lot more subtle when it's darker or when you're indoors if you don't have lights then it's not going to be that visible but if you have light especially good lighting, uh, maybe some ring lights, maybe some of those small LED lights that you can attach in different places, then it's going to, you know, create a haze or a bloom around them. So that's going to give, you know, that nice look. It's going to complement your footage um, a lot. Also, it's going to depend on what exposure settings you're using, whether you're using your native camera with your phone or you're using Filmic Pro, you can adapt 
uh, the exposure in the pro settings of your smartphone you can adapt it a lot more in filmic pro so if you're using an app like that you can definitely play around with the different exposure levels to see how that reflects when you're using the filter and that's it with a little bit of experimenting with the right diffusion filter you are going to start creating dreamy soft glow beautiful looking images with your smartphone in no time so it just comes down to playing around with it and trying different things just to see which fits your project which fits your current style which fits your workflow as well and to close this video off um, i try to say this more often in in different videos that i've done but the fact that you're using a smartphone does not limit what you can do it doesn't limit your options it doesn't limit the types of projects that you can take on it doesn't limit the style that you can shoot in it's your best camera it's the camera that you have in your pocket it's something that you can easily take with you on trips it's something that you can easily fit into a car it's something that you can easily adapt to a bunch of different situations and it gives you a big playing field to learn and to grow uh, it's just a fantastic tool to have with just a little bit of help with different tools along the way as you build your journey as you learn more uh, it becomes a really powerhouse of a filmmaking tool so i'm just leaving here with these words your smartphone does not limit you in any shape or form to be a filmmaker or to be you know a creator of video content i am going to get away from this rain drive home and i'll see you in the next video take care and happy filming